What's this guy catching? What's he doing? Does he have a baby bass? And there's a baby bass right here, actually. You guys are coming along. Then you gotta hope they don't spill. We got a crawfish. Gary. So I could see you come out. They want to see you as well. Look at that beast. Now you're a hog. So I've had the question asked before, what's it like owning a baby bass, having a pet baby bass? In this video, I'm gonna let you know the goods, the bads, all around my experience of catching this little baby bass and raising it into the awesome aquarium fish that it is right now. Now, one of the things you always gotta have on hand is a container or a bucket. Leave it in your car, trust me on this one. And why, you ask? You're gonna find out in a minute. And in addition to always having a bucket of some sort to ride around with, I always got a net, a portable net. And we're going to use this bad boy right now. Grande iced coffee, please. That's it, thank you. And there's your Starbucks hack. You can get a venti coffee just with a little extra ice. By the time it melts, you still have a venti, but you paid for a grande. Thank you. Cheers to life hacks. Remember, you can't catch bass food unless you got caffeine in your system. Remember, it's a fact. All right, and we are here. Time to wrangle up our supplies so we can go ahead and catch some food and live that baby bass life though. The parent of a baby bass. Now, in addition to your supplies, you're gonna have to have a spot in which to catch the food on a consistent basis. Time warp to the minnow land. This is one of my personal fishing spots over here. It's pretty cool. There's always a nice squad of adult minnows. They are huge, they're like the size of mollies. So it's good enough to hold my baby bass, Corona, over for a while. Oh, you can see all that motion right there. That's where these suckers are. All right, so now we gotta fill this bucket up with water. We gotta get all of our little stuff ready here. Assemble the net, and let's get rocking and rolling. We're in business. So one of the first steps that we have to endure is we have to get us some fresh water, of course, for the bucket of minnows. Looks like they mowed the grass today, obviously, so we're gonna have bits of little pieces of grass that are annoying, but we'll get through it. Pick them out. Wow, that water was really warm. Definitely gonna have to do a temperature acclimation too. You wanna make sure that you don't kill your minnows by adding them to cooler water that's inside your house if they're wild caught outside. Also, to make sure to medicate that tank from time to time as well, because you are catching wild animals out here and you are putting them now with healthy animals. Okay, so when they school, they definitely, you know, you get some good sized minnows here. These are mosquito fish. We wanna pick them out one by one and they do sometimes not fall through the holes of the net, especially when they're good size like this. I think one just did. Yep, one actually fell through the net. So it was just a little bit too small. But there are cichlids housed in the tank with this bass. So the cichlids, the jewel cichlids, they actually do eat these little mosquito fish as well. And the smaller ones tend to go as a mouthful instead of, you know, for them to bully it, torture it, and then eat it. It's sad, but it is nature. See a nice little group over here. Yeah. Got a nice big one. That'll do. That is a big one. Man. That is hot water. Florida summers be like, woo, that was a lot. That looked like more than minnows right there. All right, so still gotta keep looking for a little more activity, a little more school, schooling of the minnows. There's a couple right there, but they're very small and I don't wanna keep wasting my strokes with the net and then lose them and waste my energy because I'm tired, I just worked all day. And I'm still out here on a every other day basis catching minnows for this baby bass because if i'm going to take an animal i am going to resume the responsibility for caring for it and then making sure that it has good enough tank size good enough food 
on a frequent basis proper husbandry people and also not to overfish a certain spot so to speak i try not to be greedy and take too many minnows out more than this bass or cichlids can eat in a two to three day window now it would be obviously very hard close to impossible to outfish an area of minnows but i just try to obviously not take more than i need mm -mm, mm -mm. yeah these neighbors probably all think i'm crazy by now I feel like i see this guy a couple times a week just sitting here with a net does he have a youtube channel does he have a TikTok? I got both. What's this guy catching? What's he doing? What's he doing? Does he have a baby bass? And there's a baby bass right here, actually. How funny would that be if I caught it? No, it didn't. But what's he doing? Yeah, what am I doing? What am I doing? This is what I'm doing with my life right now. Now, one thing I definitely have observed is that even in a spot like this, right after you show up and you start splashing around a little bit and you take some minnows out they all move so we got to move a little bit down here i do see a couple they don't look too big but i'm gonna try to see if i can score at least one at least one at least one was there one or was there none yeah. see i worry and i get in my own head sometimes i came by here last week and i did some heavy minnow catching and i feel this week is a lot lower than it was last week in abundance. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I really hope not. Because I only have two really good spots to get minnows. And even myself, for one tank, it sometimes gets a little low. I do keep extra minnows in the Paku tank at the shop, but that's really more just for enrichment for the Paku, so he's not the only one in that tank. So he has other little fishy fellow friends to live with coexist with and have tank mates with. I just kind of figure that's fair, right? All right, so I actually think that, I think we only have a handful. As long as we have five, I feel confident about that. Do we have five? Six, okay, we got six in there. So that's, that's enough for tonight. I did go, I think the day before yesterday, so that's gonna be enough to satisfy the bass and the cichlids as they feed on normal, regular food. This bass is a pain in my, you know what, because we're trying to get it to hand feed so we could train it so it's a little bit easier so we don't have to keep going out and doing these kind of things and catching these fish. I mean, I wish I could even just eat frozen. Give me a break. All right, let's get the lid back on this sucker and let's get it home. Surviving is half of the battle here. The battle here. I'm gonna put these bad boys on the front seat on the floor. You guys are coming along, and I mean you, the viewers, are coming along for the journey of what it's like on a daily basis. All right, stick them right here. This is just the journey for getting the food. Then you gotta hope they don't spill. and get home before sunset. And now to get these babies inside. And we're home. And I usually rest these guys right down here to get ready for acclimation. And in the event, of course, if there is a minnow that didn't make it or if these beasts or if your bass doesn't eat a minnow and unfortunately kills it uh well if you have another fish to feed it to or any animal of course it may come in handy and us personally we got a crawfish so what i do is use the hemostat tongs go ahead and get all in there and get the unfortunate minnow that didn't make it don't know what happened there but get it out and make our way over to this hungry little beast who will always eat it. Crawfish always eat it. They are insane. We just had one recently pass. If any of you follow us on our TikTok, I'm sure you've seen that. And we had a lot of fun feeding it these little mosquito fish that if you guys do follow us on TikTok, you'll very much know. Gary. So, Gary, Gary, stay away Gary. from the crawfish. 
Stay away, Gary. Gary? Gary! <laughs> Here we go. That's it. This crawfish will devour that minnow within the next hour. Simple. I'll shut your light and let you eat in peace. Now, back to these fellers with these minners. All right, so there's obviously even the top on the inside has some condensation on it because it is, this is rather warm water. And this is at 78 degrees, which I always keep my house at when we're not home. So it's definitely, it has to cool down a little bit because we don't want the minnows to be dead. We want them to be live food, of course. Are you kidding me? I wouldn't be in this position if this beast ate dead food. And to not pick at the little cichlid, as sometimes it's definitely, it has a little scarring or a little, hey, you leave him alone too, you big old one. But always kind of picks at it. See, that's definitely not fin rot, people. Before you make assumptions and accusations, that's not fin rot. You live with a baby bass. Live with a bass. Take a look in the mirror. How would you look? How would you look? And on that note, uh, we're also debating on whether to set up another tank for these guys. These guys were wild caught, uh, or we're gonna let them back go. But I love this one. Look at the pattern, and this one, this one was blood red, and it's already starting to turn turquoise. So we're thinking of possibly putting these back into the wild. If you do intend on getting a baby bass, or if you already have one, be very careful on what you house it with, even a pleco, because anything that fits in that mouth, remember, it will eat it. Corona has grown so much. I will leave a link in the description below and you guys can check out when we first caught Corona and these little guys too. I mean, how much, I mean, it's it's crazy. I hope Corona comes out in the next couple minutes so we can show you how much this thing has grown. I mean, it is incredible. When we caught this, smaller than that smallest cichlid right there. It was a minnow. It was a bass fry, a bass minnow. Now, you could barely fit into your log crazy i mean the future plans for this is very much unknown i mean i guess we'll keep upgrading the tanks as much as we possibly can or i was even thinking of housing it with the paku at the shop which would be very cool make a little different predator tank hey come back here why you don't like that idea corona you have a buddy so just getting home from work this is the problem of when there's not enough minnows we woke up this morning and there was about five dead minnows lying on the gravel. And sometimes they get senselessly taken. Their lives get taken by this beast, Corona, overnight, or the cichlids happen to devour them or pick on them. As you could tell, one of the cichlids' fins are pretty roughed up right there because it constantly gets harassed by the baby bass. And of course, there's been a lot of ruffling up with the vegetation we have growing in here, the plants, and I just came home to this. So this fish is clinging on to life and it doesn't look that good right now. So I don't know what happened when I was gone. They get fed every day, these cichlids, as well as a baby bass with its minnows. But now the minnows haven't been present in only 24 hours and this is what happens. If you guys see our other videos, you see how many times that we go and we every time we go fishing every in between we always pick up minnows that's i mean a chore of mine even this one cichlid won't leave its side it's almost as if it's protecting it it's not trying to eat it it's not trying to do anything vicious or attack it but once again i don't know even if these cichlids did get into a skirmish while i was at work i don't know what's going on but that's not cool, man. Unfortunately, these sort of things can do and will happen when you have a predator fish. And when they don't get what they want or if they get hungry or just moody and they just wanna start devouring things in the tank, well, they can do that because they're a predator. So I just came home from work and I realized there's no more minnows. Do you wanna see what happens when this baby bass Runs out of minnows even just for one day? This happens! And it's crazy because they do eat so well all the time. I mean, I feed these guys two times a day. Look at that. Look at that. That's a healthy one, I'm telling you. Just sometimes that bass can be really, really savage and mean, saying, get away from my shrimp. Get away from my shrimp. Man, that's a sad story. I'm almost, I'm almost contemplating on 
you know, letting these guys go or maybe possibly separating them in another tank, but I don't know. I, I really don't need any more tanks. We have a bunch of fish and you are the mean one. You are the mean one. I don't know why. Don't know why. I know it's instinctful and it's just a part of how you are as nature. You are a predator fish and you guys are very aggressive too. These guys devour minnows, they shred them apart. If you've seen any of our other videos, and you definitely know these guys are crazy. Shredding minnows apart. I mean, these guys eat very, very well. So this right here is unacceptable. But things happen, and we always do treat this tank too. Anti-parasitical, antibacterial, antifungal, because we do catch these minnows in the wild. So we want to make sure you know all the fish do thrive in this tank very well, as they should. And unfortunately, that's just the nature of owning a baby largemouth bass. We caught Corona right in the middle when the coronavirus was just starting. And we caught this little baby bass as a fry. It was just as big as one of these mosquito fish that we normally would have in here. We always have them by the dozens in the 20. This has only happened one time where I noticed it was a little scarring and one of the jewel cichlids right here and no it's not fin rot that one got roughed up the other day when i didn't have any minnows in here and the baby bass decided to do its aggressive behavior and go ahead and pick on them so that's what happened to that one right there and now today one was not so lucky no do not pick on him leave him be that's your family it's supposed to be protecting it and right now it's not doing well and it looks like it's only gonna go south from here. Sure, sure, grab your popcorn, sit back and watch. You guys are heartless. You are heartless. So with that little bit of information, beware when you have a bass. So I've made my efforts in hopes that he would actually come out and we could get a good little shot of Corona over here, but it doesn't seem to be happening that way today. My little boy's playing shy. Come on, don't you wanna come out and show the viewers how big you got? I mean, do they have to watch the other videos in order to see what you look like? I haven't done a video on Corona in about three weeks or so, just to show the size. You never know, this shot up, it's just creeping out just a little bit, but likes to stay in the log. Well, let me drop a couple shrimp in here just to see, because I know they're gonna eat, that's for sure. These guys are beasts, but sometimes it triggers Corona to actually come out of the little cave, out of that underwater log, thinking that, hey, there's food. There's aggression in here, just like when you fish. When you fish for bass, they like to go after those little aggressive fish or lures. And personally, it's been, it was a challenge catching Corona. Do not, do not doubt that one bit. These little bass, as minnows, they are super fast. Lightning, oh, there comes Corona right out of the log a little bit almost. But very awesome, and it's been a pleasure, uh, except it's it's been very tedious to keep up with the feedings and the demands of how frequent and how much this bass will eat. So, you know, for safety, for these jewel cichlids over here, I'm gonna have to act very soon within the next several weeks and make a decision on what we're doing with them so their lives get spared as well because they've been just as much of a pleasure to have as the bass. Peekaboo, I could see you. Come out, they want to see you as well. You're doing nothing in there. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's slightly feeding time. It is feeding time. You will get your food. Except your food's not in pellet form, unfortunately, right now. It's in live food form. And that's what we are trying to steer away from. And that will be my next challenge in the series of videos is training this little baby largemouth bass how to eat out of my hand. But I'm going to have to not feed it for several days after we do something with these cichlids. That's gonna be the next chapter is getting rid of the cichlids from this tank and whatever we do with them so I cannot feed the bass every other day and maybe feed every three days or every four days at first so we can try to hand train and make the bass a little bit more hungrier. How did we catch this baby bass? Watch the video. Once again, the link will be in the description below. Lightning speed and a big net. That's all I got to say. Those are the two hints right there for you.
and patience, of course. How long have we had this bass? We've had this bass for about, I'd say six weeks now, maybe seven weeks. Right in the beginning of quarantine is when we went fishing and that's when we caught this baby. Oh man, there we go. I knew it. The second they start getting aggressive, so does the baby bass. So feel free to question and comment below if you have any questions about owning a baby bass or if you've caught one yourself, that's pretty cool. Now the bass is, oh, it's coming out. Look at that hog. Oh, but Corona's gonna be very mad because they're stealing from the top, which is the food area. Look at that beast. If you look at the other videos, Corona could barely, I mean, it was a minnow. It was a minnow in this log, a minnow. Now you're a hog. But all seriousness has absolutely, I mean, times 20 in size, only six weeks. So we've had the bass for about six weeks in the very beginning of quarantine. And we are almost in July right now, the last week of June. So, I mean, it's definitely outgrown this tank so very much. But it's been an absolute joy. It's been great content. Um, we've had several videos on it. We actually have a playlist on this bass. So you may want to check out the playlist as well, containing all the videos on this lovely journey of having you. Look at you. How beautiful. How beautiful. Show yourself. There we go. There we go. All we wanted to do is just see you. Thank you so much for coming out. They will all appreciate you. All A1A fam will love you for that. Thank you so much. I wish I could train you like a dolphin. It's not that easy though. I really love these guys. They are such beautiful aquarium fish, but they are aggressive too. They're just not as predatorial as the largemouth basses. So they are, once again, the bigger this bass grows, the more in jeopardy they're going to be because if it could fit in its mouth, it can eat it. And just like any other animal, don't be fooled. If it's got a mouth, it will bite. Okay, so apparently this baby bass now has scoped out its meal on the floor. So I gotta get to work. I gotta acclimate these fish. I gotta feed this baby bass. If you check out our other videos, you'll see these fish and this bass are ruthless. Unfortunately, it does not feed the second I drop these fish in too. So there's gonna be nothing you'll miss, I promise. There's nothing to see here, Corona, nothing. But check out the other videos. Feel free to like, drop a comment below, all that good stuff. Subscribe to this channel. Thanks so much for watching A1A Adventures. So people want to know what it's like having a baby bass. Let's see. You always have to have a container on hand and leave your keys by it so you don't forget it. You always gotta have the net and a special spot to catch the food for this lovely face.